Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Today, let's talk about that low-cost electric pickup truck that Ford's coming out with what it calls its universal EV platform. And I'm going right off the notes that I took at the event that Ford held and uh, in talking to different officers in the company. The headline to me in all of this is that the company that invented the moving assembly line for automotive assembly is now going to get rid of it. They're going with a modular approach that's going to result in affordable EVs that could appeal to enough customers to fill up the Louisville, Kentucky plant. Maybe not just with that pickup, and I'll get into more of that in a minute. This could put Ford on the path to profitability with EVs. And you know, it's been losing billions a year on them. And it's all thanks to taking a clean sheet, first principles approach. So this isn't just some sort of stripped down vehicle. And Jim Farley had a great line. He said, the automotive graveyard is littered with affordable vehicles that were launched with good intentions. But then nobody could make any money on them. So who cares? They had to be uh, canned later on. If Ford is successful in all this, it's probably going to force all other legacy automakers to follow suit, at least with their EVs. Okay, let's get to the basics of the truck. It's going to be a compact pickup with the interior room of a Toyota RAV4, but also going to have a pickup bed and going to have a frunk. So a lot of usability in this. And one of the reasons why they went to going with a pickup first and not a crossover, which is, you know, is a red hot segment. And here's another good uh, comment from Jim Bombeck at Ford. Crossovers just aren't good for some jobs. You don't want to put mulch in the back of your crossover. That's why they went with the pickup. They're talking about a $30,000 base price. More on that in a minute too. It's likely going to have a 50 kilowatt hour-ish battery pack LFP prismatic batteries with a 300 mile plus range. And it's going to have unprecedented aerodynamics for a pickup, which is how they're one of the ways that they're going to get good range with a small battery. Small battery also means faster charging time. And that addresses any char uh, uh, worries about charging time anxiety. It's going to have a 400 volt system. People are gonna say, oh, why didn't they go with 800 volt? Well, guess what? The number of 800 volt fast DC chargers, at least in the United States right now, I mean, go, go try to find them. It's like one or 2% of all the chargers that are out there. So why come out with an affordable vehicle with an expensive or more expensive 800 volt system when people won't get the benefits of it? That's why they went with 400 volt. Also going to have bi-directional charging. So when the big storm hits your neighborhood and the power goes out, you're going to keep your house running with this thing. Acceleration, they're talking a zero to 60 time faster than a Mustang EcoBoost, which means it's going to be less than 4.9 seconds. And this is a, another key thing. They say it's going to be cheaper to operate than a three-year-old Tesla. So why go buy a used EV when you can get a brand new one that's actually cheaper to operate. And they're also going to have Blue Cruise available on this thing. So for sure, that's not going to be part of the base price. Okay, let's get to the real news in all this. This is a radical change for the Ford Motor Company. Another good quote from Farley. For too long, the legacy automakers played it too safe. And it's true, they have, including Ford. But now they're making this change. And by eliminating the moving assembly line, which is 30% inefficient, people don't realize that. The moving assembly line is actually extremely inefficient. How does the industry make up for that inefficiency? It adds more workstations and more people on the line. This process that Ford's going to use is going to eliminate 600 people at the Louisville plant. And that kind of shocked me. I mean, that the UAW went along with this for getting rid of 600 jobs. And this shows to me that Ford's got a pretty good relationship with the UAW, at least in that plant. The plan is to make the vehicles out of three modules, front module, center module, rear module. Also, each of these modules is going to use what Ford's calling unicastings, not 
giga castings, not mega castings, unit castings. And Alan Clark, you know, who came from Tesla is uh, running this whole Skunk Works program, says the ultimate goal is to go to one casting. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. And they took a lesson from Sandy Monroe, our good dear friend Sandy Monroe, who has always said the best part is no part, i.e. design it out. Don't make some component and then add brackets to hold it in place. Put the mounting points right into the component itself so you don't need any brackets. So you try to make one part do the role of several parts. And by breaking this vehicle down into separate modules, it makes assembly far, far easier. So get this, they're going to have 40% fewer workstations in the plant, 20% fewer parts, 25% fewer fasteners, 15% faster assembly time, 50% fewer cooling hoses and connectors. In the body alone, they got rid of three quarters of the parts. They got rid of half the fasteners and two thirds of the welds compared to a Ford Escape, which is what's now being made at the, the Louisville plant. They're also going with a zonal electronic architecture that removed 4,000 feet of wiring uh, compared to a, a typical first gen EV. That saved 22 pounds and I had to look it up. According to the latest spot prices for copper, Getting rid of that 22 pounds means they saved $95 worth of copper. For the workers in the plant, working on this vehicle is going to be far better than anything that they've ever worked on before. No reaching, no stretching, no twisting, no bending. Everything's going to be within easy reach of the fingertips of these workers, which also makes automation a lot easier too. And they're not having to get in and out of the car, putting in the IP, putting in the seats, putting in the console, putting in uh, the carpeting and everything. So 63% less getting in and out of the vehicle for the, the workers. No pop clamps. They're just going to have quick connect for hoses and things like that. And they're going to do a significant amount of retraining of the workforce using virtual reality. Let's talk more about the process because this may be the most significant part of it. Ford's taking lessons from Tesla and taking it to a new level. Because remember, two ex-Tesla execs, Alan Clark and Doug Field are running this. And when Alan Clark was at Tesla, he reported to Doug Field and Doug Field reported to Elon Musk. They know what they're doing and they know how to do better than what Tesla was doing because everybody learns things and in the next project is able to do it better. They're using zero-based first principles approach to doing this, questioning every step of the way. Do we really need to do that? They located the Skunk Works in California, about as far away from the mothership in Dearborn, Michigan, that you can get and still stay in the United States, at least in the lower 48. And Ford did that because they knew its legacy system was never going to be able to come up with a vehicle like this in the time that they're doing with the lower investment cost that they're doing. And they were very careful who they let on to the team. Doug Fields got a great, great quote. He said, we did not allow people who had to be managed to be part of the program. So they got uh, a small, co-located, cross-functional team, only 500 engineers. That's a really small team to do a program. But it doesn't mean that they threw everything away. They brought manufacturing people in from Dearborn from the very outset of the program. They brought others in and out on an as needed basis. They designed the assembly process at the same time they designed the vehicle. This plant's also going to have the highest amount of automation of any Ford plant in the world. And they're going to use faster digital connection at every station to do inspection, quality inspections at every step of the way. So here's some of my observations about the program. Total investment is $5 billion. Two billion of that is going into the Louisville plant. Three billion is going into the battery plant in Marshall, Michigan, that's going to make those prismatic LFP batteries. Two billion dollars is a lot of money to put into an existing assembly plant. And I question them on that. And the answer is, they're going to build more than just that pickup. 
they're going to have different variations, different top hats, different bodies that they're going to be able to put on the same platform for minimal investment cost. Uh, best as I can tell, and Ford's being pretty mum on all this, there could be a van as well as a small crossover, a medium size crossover, and a three row crossover. And so when you add the pickup into that, doing that many models for $2 billion with everything that they're doing, maybe the $2 billion isn't as outrageous as I first thought it would be. Also, Ford's going to insource a lot more high value, high cost components. Uh, who knows what that's going to be? My guess is instrument panel. Instrument panel is one of the most expensive things in a car. It interfaces with almost every engineering discipline that you've got. You got the HVAC, you got the audio, you've got FMVSS safety stuff. You, I mean, uh, an instrument panel is a great thing to be able to insource because of all the componentry that goes into it. Also seats, why not make seats inside this plant like, uh, like Tesla does? But uh, the point is they're eliminating 600 jobs even though they're insourcing a lot more work, and that just shows you how much more productive this assembly process is going to be. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the truck's going to use zonal computing to get rid of uh, all that uh, wiring. And uh, with that, they're able to insource a whole lot more of the software. In fact, Doug Field says it uses the most in-house software ever for Ford. And any of the software that interfaces, uh, that the customer interfaces with or needs to be updated a lot or add features with, Ford's going to do that in-house. When it comes to safety-related components, and I'm guessing, because they wouldn't tell me, uh, maybe like braking modules, airbag modules, and things like that, since it's all safety-related, all that stuff is Six Sigma, you know, it works. Uh, probably suppliers are going to continue to write that software. And as far as uh, sourcing on this goes, uh, Ford didn't, just didn't look at the, the piece price, the bill of materials price. They looked at the total landed cost. And so Alan Clark said, you know, we looked at how far apart from a supplier had to travel and then added in the cost of diesel fuel. And it's, this kind of blows my mind how the, the legacy industry has been fixated on piece price without looking at the total landed cost. That is, what is the cost of the product when it actually lands in the assembly plant, including all the logistics costs on top of that? So maybe it's time the industry got into that. My conclusion on this, Ford is taking a big risk. I'll call it a massive risk with this project. But I also think the bigger risk would have been to not do it. By taking a clean sheet, first principles approach, by going with modular assembly, by setting a, a skunk works team away from the mothership, Ford could come really close to the Chinese in cost and it could start turning a profit on EVs. And by putting multiple products in the plant, it doesn't have to worry about trying to sell 200,000 electric pickups. You know, if it's got four or five, it may only have to sell 20,000 to 30,000 of each one of those models to fill up the whole plant. And so I think that is actually pretty doable. And don't get too fixated on that $30,000 price. That's an entry level price. That's to get all the headlines about it. It's probably safer to say that once customers go and equip these vehicles with all the, the stuff they want on them, they're going to be under $40,000. That's where I think these products are going to come in, thirty dollars to $40,000. But this is a big deal. The company that invented the moving assembly line is going to get rid of it. That alone is history in the making. There are several caveats, though. The truck and all these derivatives have got to be compelling products. They're the kind of products that have got to make customers shout hooray and run to the showrooms to get them. And more than anything else, Ford has got to execute this program with perfection. Do you want to see the automotive industry grow and thrive? So do we. 
That's why we dedicate our shows to providing the people in the industry with important data and information and access to the people who are driving the industry forward with the guests that we bring on our shows and the interviews that we conduct. But we need your help to continue doing it. That's why I'm asking you to support AutoLine with a YouTube or Patreon membership. It'll get you extra content that will be available only to members, but it will especially make sure that you and AutoLine continue to drive the automotive industry forward.